Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about the floating point data types in C++. We'll talk about the different types. We'll talk about the range of values that they can hold. We'll talk about the different ways that you can represent floating point numbers in your code. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the big idea here is that we use floating point data types to define variables that hold real numbers. So what are real numbers? Real numbers are numbers that have decimal places. So 8.1, 3.141579, 2.643, etc. There are different ways that you can represent floating point numbers. And in the table here, you'll see that we have decimal notation, we've got scientific notation, and we've got E notation. Computers will typically use E notation to represent floating point values. Now, if you look at the decimal notation column, that's pretty straightforward. That's what you're used to. If you look at the scientific notation, it should be pretty familiar to you too. You should have seen this in an earlier math class where you have, for example, the first one, 2.4791 times 10 to the second power, right? Which is equivalent to 247.91 in decimal notation. But in E notation, what you have is you have 2.4791 E2. So that E2 is just a way of writing, you know, times 10 to the second power. All right. So, in C++, you're going to have three different data types that you can use to represent floating point numbers. So you've got float, you've got double, and you've got long double. Now, the float data type is considered to be single precision. And typically, you're going to have a variable that can store a floating point number accurately up to about seven decimal places of precision. Remember, computers can't store floating point numbers with 100% accuracy because of potential rounding errors. And if you think about that, go, what are, you, what are you talking about? Well, think about pi. Is it possible for a computer to store pi accurately? No, because it's never ending. So it has to round off at some point, right? Now with single precision data type, the float, then you can be assured that you're gonna be able to store about seven decimal places accurately before any rounding errors come in. Then you also have the double data type, which is a double precision. Um, number. And so that one is going to require a little bit more memory and you're going to be guaranteed to have your number stored accurately out to about 15 decimal places. Now, if you take a look at the next table that we have on the screen, you can see a summary. You've got the single precision data type, which is a float. You've got the double precision data type, which is a double. And then you also have a new data type, the long double precision data type, which is long double. And so big difference here is going to be memory that you use and the range of numbers that can be stored. So floats can be four bytes, double is going to be eight bytes, and a long double is going to be at least eight bytes as well. Some compilers will use 10 bytes, which gives you a bigger range of numbers. Now there are no unsigned versions of these floating point data types in all machines, uh, float, double, or long double can store either positive or negative numbers. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, so let's go ahead and define a floating point variable we'll call F, and we'll assign to it a floating point literal. So we'll do something like this, F equals 3.6. And then we can display the contents of that variable using C out, just like we can with any other variable. So we got something that looks like this. Now you're going to see that we got the f equals 3.6 um, displayed to the screen. No problem at all. We can create a double variable. We'll call that double d. And we can assign to that, you know, a negative number, maybe 137.2345. And then we can display that on the screen. So we can do something like uh, d equals, and then we'll display the d. Okay, no problem. You're gonna see that we got the negative 137.234 on there. Now, let's talk about the different types of literals that we can do. So let's do something using E notation. So how about we do a long double, long double, and we'll call that LD, and then we'll do LD equals 3.1 E, Four, right? So, so what is this? 3.1 E4. This is E notation, and this is similar to 3.1 times 
10 to the fourth power. So that is like moving the decimal place to the right four spots, right? So we go from 3.1 to 3.1, and then we still need three more decimal places. So this is another way of writing 31,000 in, in decimal notation. So we got our example of E notation, scientific notation, and decimal notation. So let's see out the LD. See out, LD equals LD. And then we'll display that. So you have the option to write these in different formats, okay, in different formats. And so it can be really useful to use the E notation, because imagine, if you will, that, you know, you were trying to represent the distance between the Earth and the Sun, right? So you had something like double distance. And I don't know how far away that is. It's a long ways, right? It's a lot of miles. So let's say that it was this many miles away. Well, instead of writing out all those zeros, you know, what you could do is you could use that E notation. So you might do something like 3.0 E and then, I don't know how many zeros this is, this is a lot. But let's say that it's 12 zeros. Then you can do 3.0 E12, right? And so in that way, you don't have to write out all the zeros and risk miscounting, right? So you can do it that way. Now, that's really convenient to be able to do that. It's got its advantages. But if you've got a smaller number like 3.6 or you know 121.7 or something like that, then you know using the regular old decimal notation is going to be better. So you know it'd be better to do 3.12 rather than doing something like rather than doing the e notation where you would say 312 e to the negative two, right? So it's so this is more confusing than just doing the straight up decimal number. And if you have the choice between, you know, more readable or more confusing, always go for more readable. Now, something to keep in mind here is that, you know, if you take a look at when we compiled our code, you know, we were assigning 3.6 to F. And when we compile and ran it, you know, you could, you might have seen a message saying, here, let's go ahead and compile it and run it again. Right? It says truncation from double to float. You might get a message like that from the compiler, truncation from double to float. And the reason that you get that is because the literals themselves are assigned to memory by the compiler as doubles. The 3.6 is a double and doubles are eight bytes, but a float is four bytes, right? So what that's saying is that, you know, you've got potential problem here because, you know, what happens if you needed five bytes to accurately represent your number and you tried to assign it to a float variable. Well, you've lost a bytes worth of data essentially. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're using the right data type for the right literal, but also, you know, if you are certain of that, you can avoid having that error message by using F here or uppercase F or lowercase F. And what that's doing is it's telling the compiler, no, 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 no. I want you to treat this I want you to use this as a four byte float rather than a double. And so that gets rid of that error message for you because this is now gonna be treated, the 3.6 is gonna be treated as a float rather than a double. So you get rid of that error message and it's just a way for you know that, that warning to go away and for you to explicitly state, no, 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 no I know, I, this, is, this is the number that I want, I, it's a float and I know that I have enough space and all that, so, so don't worry about it. So you could also do something similar if you had a long double and you wanted to treat that as a long, you could say, you could throw an L on the end there, and then that's gonna modify the amount of data that's being used by the literal over here. Now, it's not as big a problem if you don't do that because of the fact that a long double is going to be at least as big as a double, okay, in terms of the memory that's being used. So you don't have to worry about that accidental loss of data, but you can explicitly say, no, no, this is, this is a long, this is what I mean, this is what I want. So we'll go ahead and use this L here. So the L means long double and the F means float, treat it as a float, okay? So we've got that. And then there's one last thing that we need to talk about. And that's what happens if you assign a floating point value to an integer variable. So let us say that we had something like this. Let's say that we created int x and we tried to assign to it 3.14159. 
So the question then becomes, well, what actually ends up in X? Well, I'm going to show you. And the problem is, is remember integer data types, they store whole numbers. They don't store floating point numbers. They can't store real numbers. So what's going to be stored inside of the X? Well, you're about to see that the value that's actually stored in there is going to be three. So why? Because what happens is, is that the decimal places just get truncated. They just, they just get forgotten about. Only the three is what goes into X. There's no rounding that happens here. So let us say that, you know, it was 3.94159. It's not going to be four that goes into X. It's going to just be three because the decimal places all get truncated. So it's important to remember that you have the right data type for the right type of data. And the data type that you have has enough memory to store the data that you want to place inside of it. Okay, so now you know the basics behind the floating point data types. You know the different data types. You know how to create variables of those data types. You know the range of numbers that can be stored in them. You know how to represent the literals in your code. You know the differences between decimal point notation, e notation, and scientific notation. Thanks for watching.